God bless you all, and it's so good to have you all with us today. We are going to continue in our thoughts on faith, a supernatural force. Amen. A supernatural force. Amen. This is part two, and we're going to title this. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. God, we bless your holy name. Now, Father, we know that all things do work together for good to them that love you, Lord God, and for those who are called according to your purpose. And we realize, Father, that faith without works is dead. So, Father, as we come to understand more about how to apply faith to our lives, because we see faith as a supernatural force that is working in us and through us to bring about the promises that you have given us in your word. And we know that these promises are obtained by faith. So, Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to crown our head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I ask you, Father, to anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you right now that we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing today? Blessed. Amen. That's wonderful. That's right. Blessed is the right word. Blessed is the right word. Because, you see, we're going to be dealing with our confession today because confession plays a great part in faith and not only confession but standing on the word of God standing on the word of God is what we do to release our faith that show God that we believe his word amen when we stand upon the promise of God that show us that we believe and that we receive what God has said to us glory to God glory to God and so we thank God for all of you that have joined us today on Facebook. Anna, amen. We thank God for you and thank God for Peace Fighter, amen. And we thank God for all of you that are with us on our Periscope and those of you that are with us on our on Live Me. Amen. God bless you and those with you, those that are with us on our per, uh, Spricker. Amen, amen. Glory to God. I want to encourage you today. To keep your faith in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Because you see, your faith plays a great part in you receiving whatever you believe in God for. Whether it's healing, whether it's uh, uh, finances, whether it's re in your relationship, whether it's in, whether it's in uh, your, the life of your children, restoration for your children. Amen. Faith plays a great part in everything that we endeavor to receive from God that we are believing God for. Amen? And so I want to encourage you today to simply release your faith. Release your faith. Amen? Faith is a force. And it's a supernatural source that God gives us. Amen? So we know that faith is working for us on our behalf. God is a God, faith God. He's not a doubting God. He's a faith God. Amen. I was just in my office uh, studying and, and reading on last night and this morning, and uh, it just the Lord just started speaking to my heart about faith, and then He gave me some some illustrations of the the supernatural force of faith. Faith is taking God at His word, and this is something that most of us don't do. We don't take God at His word. This is why we don't see the promises of God. Uh, being unfolded in our lives. Amen. We believe God for healing, but yet we don't really believe the word of God can do it. We don't believe that God can do it. And so if we truly believe that God is our healer, then when we come to the word of God, we won't just look at what God said. We will start confessing what God has said instead of what the enemy has said. Believing is only part of our faith. That's only part of releasing our faith. Amen. Believing and receiving is only a part of it. You're, to show God that you mean business, 
you're going to start not only believing the Word of God, not only are you going to uh, hear the Word of God and believe the Word of God, but you're going to begin to confess the Word of God. In other words, putting actions to your faith. Faith without works is dead. And so how do you put action to your faith? By declaring or speaking what God has said. Declaring or speaking what God has said. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of people that, that talk about faith, but still don't know how to act on their faith. They talk about it all the time, but they don't really know how to act on their faith. Amen? And so before the day is over, before this lesson is over, I pray that I help you to understand, amen, how to act on the Word of God in faith. Amen? So uh, I'm asking you right now to give me your undivided attention and ask God. Just ask God yourself. Say, God, speak to my heart. And help me to understand what is what you're about to speak to our, in our lives. Amen. Just ask God to give you an understanding. And I'm quite sure that he will. Amen. Because he wants you to understand how to exercise your faith. Because the promises that are in God's word has already been given to us. But we receive them by faith. We obtain them. We, we receive them. And we obtain them by faith. Amen. So I want to just make you aware of that. Because, you see, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. I'm going to turn there right now. The book of Hebrew, chapter 11. Hebrew, chapter 11. We're going to be going through a few scriptures this morning, so, this afternoon. So, y'all come on, just, just hold, hold, hold in there with me. Hang in there with me. Hebrew, chapter 11, verse number 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Now, notice what it said, verse 3. Through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So we can see that faith works through words. Amen. Because he said that the worlds were framed by the word. The worlds were framed by the word. Amen. So when we take the word of God literally and believe the word of God, and as we stand on what God has said, folks, we have, uh, we have allowed the Word of God to become active in our lives. The Word of God become active in our lives. Amen? So that, that's what we see right here. When God was, uh, create, uh, in, in, when God was creating the, the earth. Amen? The Bible says in verse number 3, Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 3, Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the Word of God, so that things which are, are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen? So that things that are seen... They were not made of things which do appear. So, in other words, God spoke them into existence. How did he do it? He did it with his words. He did it with his words. Amen. Verse number four. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained it, witness that he that he was righteous, and God, let me say, God testifying of his guilt. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. I like verse number five because verse number five and verse number six are very important right now. Amen. So he said in verse number five, this is Hebrew chapter 11, verse number five said, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, we, what, what do we know? How do we please God? We please God by standing on his word, by walking by faith and not by sight. So how do we please God? By standing on his word and walking by faith and not by sight. In other words, taking God literally at his word. Taking him literally at his word. Amen. So God is calling us to understand how to release the promises of God because the word of God has the power within itself to bring about his own fulfillment when we learn how to apply correctly in our lives and to our lives. Amen. And so he says, verse number six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. So faith plays a great part in everything that we endeavor to accomplish for the kingdom of God. Amen. One of the keys that, uh, that, that we need to understand about how to activate our faith. One of the real key, one, one, of the real, one of the real keys of faith is that your mouth and your heart 
must come in alignment when speaking. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> I'm going to reverse it this time. Your heart, what's coming out of your heart and out of your mouth must be in alignment with the word of God. Because the promises that God has given us are in his word. And that's why we must, al 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 what we allow in our heart to come out of our mouth must be in line with the word of God. And now, not only that, not only that, but we must, glory to God, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost on this thing, we must confess what we believe in God's word. Amen? We must confess what we believe in God's word because to just read it and to just hear someone else read it to us is not enough. We got to believe it so much to the point that we will confess it. Amen? Because faith, believing, is only part of releasing your faith or re of receiving the promise of God. Amen? You can't receive the promise of God just by believing on it. And I thought that for a long time. I mean, I really, I really drilled in on that a whole lot of times when I was missing it by, by a mile. Amen? But when, now that I've come to the understanding of how to really activate the Word of God in my life, and I know it has a lot to do with confession. Amen? And that's why Mark chapter 11 is very important to us because it gives us a great illustration of believing and, and confessing. Amen? Believing and confessing. Amen? And also in prayer. It shows us how, how powerful the Word is when we learn to apply correctly. Amen? So now, as we look at this, we see that faith takes that faith takes a stand in I'm going to say it again. Faith takes a stand on the word. And as faith takes a stand on the word, we hold fast to that word. Amen? We hold fast to that word. Not only do we hold fast to that word, but our, the words that we allow to come out, out of our hearts concerning that which we have allowed our heart to obtain and to receive must be in alignment with the word of God. Amen? So faith and action releases the will of God to be manifest in our life. What is the will of God? The will of God for our life is that in blessing, I will bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply your seed soul. Amen. Let's look at the life of Abraham. First of all, let's take you to let's take you to the book of Genesis first, chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 22 first. It's very powerful, folks. This, is, this was ministered to my heart in a very powerful way, and I pray that it ministered to your heart as it did mine. Amen. In Genesis chapter 22, we're going to talk about Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, he, he waited a long time for his son to come about. Amen. He was 100 years old when he had his son. When, and Sarah was, what, 90 years old when she had her son? Amen. They had waited a long time for this son to come about, the promise of God to be fulfilled in their lives. Amen. So in, in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham, he, his son, and up and, and starting to grow down and, he, and he run around and playing and, and playing with his mother and, and his daddy taking him out and showing him the, the, the things that, that, con, that concerns him, amen, and, and Abraham was, was proud of his son. And so now God is speaking to Abraham and saying, Abraham, look at verse number in, in Genesis chapter 22. And, the, and let's, let's start reading verse number 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I, I am here. Here I am, I, he said. Abraham replied, Here I am. And verse number 2 said, and, the, and, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Merah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Amen. Now, Abraham, he had every reason to not to believe, not to doubt, not, he had every, every reason not to carry out his assignment, because he see, this was a long time coming, and he loved this child, he loved this child so much that he didn't want nothing to happen to this child, but Look how much he loved God even more. He loved God so much to the fact, so much to the point that he
he was willing to sacrifice his son even though he waited such a long time for this son to come about. And yet his love for God was a whole lot greater than the love that he had for his son. Can you imagine that? That he, that God, that he had such a, a love for God that he, no matter what God told him, that he would carry out the, he would carry it out. Amen. He took, Abraham was uh, waiting for this child for a for hundred years. Amen. He had got in trouble. Him and Sarah had got in trouble because they, they got a, a they, they got a, a child by, by uh, Sarah's uh, handmaiden. Amen. And they, and they got in trouble with this Ishmael. With Ishmael. And now God has given him the promised child. But it took a while and Sarah was well stricken in age and so was Abraham. So they had to wait on the promise. They, when that promise came forth, they, I'm telling you what, I believe that they really, really, really was happy. I mean, Sarah couldn't imagine giving, a, giving birth to a child at that age that she was in. And Sarah, and Sarah, she had been waiting for such a long time. She had gave up. How do I know she gave up? Because she told Abraham to go into her, to her maid, go into her servant. See, Sarah had gave up on the promise. But God never forgot the promise. And I'm, I'm saying that to say this. Whatever promise God has given you, God has not forgotten the promise. You just got to hold on and just not give up on what God has said. Because God has not forgotten the promise that he gave you, that he made to you. He didn't forget the promise he gave to Abraham. And he's not going to forget the promise he made to you. Amen. Because the promise that he made to you is still in his word. And when we learn how to uh, 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 enforce the word of God, amen, through faith, God is going to confirm those promises that he has given us in his word. How he's going to do it? He's going to do it through faith. Through faith. Faith is a supernatural force. Faith is a supernatural force that God has given us, amen, that once we learn how to tap into it, we can activate Every promise in God's word concerning us. We can activate every promise in God's word concerning us. Amen. Notice what he says right here in, in Genesis chapter 22. And verse number 2 again. He said, and, he, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Merah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Notice, Abraham did not question God. He didn't, God, what, well, I don't believe this. I don't believe this is God. I, I need a confirmation on this. No, Abraham, he knows the voice of God. He knew the voice of God. Amen. And when God spoke to his heart, Abraham, he took his word and he stood on God's promise. And he went and carried out the assignment by faith. He did not allow his circumstances or what have you to step in the way. He didn't even tell his wife about what he was going to do. He didn't tell Sarah what he was going to do. Because had he told Sarah, oh my God, I imagine they would have been really in for it then. <laughs> They'd have been really in for it then if she had told Sarah. But he didn't even tell Sarah what he was about to do. Didn't even tell Sarah. So he he, he, he got two, two of his servants and he got the wood and the, and the and, and his son, he got the fire, amen, and they took off, and it took them three days to arrive where they was going to. Look at verse number, verse number three, verse number three. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled, the, saddled his donkey, his ass, and took two of his, his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, and carved the wood at, for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place which God had told them, had told him. Verse number four, very important. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Notice what he said? On the third day, he raised up his eyes and saw the place afar off. See, Abraham, he held on to what God has said. Amen? To what God has said. What did God tell him? That in blessing, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and the sand and the sand, and the sand upon the seashore. Amen. Abraham, he knew what God had promised him. And so Abraham, 
even though God told him to go offer his son up, Abraham still walking by faith and not by sight. Still walking by faith and not by sight. He's not looking at the situation. He's not looking at the, 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 the circumstances that he faces. He's keeping his eyes on what God has already spoken to his heart. He did not give up. He did not quit. He kept his eyes on those things which God has spoken to his heart. Now notice here, verse number four. And on the, and on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men. Now notice what he said unto the young men. He said, abide here. Abide ye. What he says right here? And he said unto the young men, abide ye here with the donkey, or with the ass, the donkey. Amen. Abide ye here. Amen. And so, he, and he took his son, Isaac. He put the wood on Isaac. Amen. To, that Isaac may carry the wood. And he took the the, 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 the fire and the blade. And they on their way up on top of the hill where he was to offer his sacrifice. He went there. Now notice what he did. First, he established the altar where he was to build the, where he was to sacrifice his sacrifice, to burn his sacrifice. As he was on his way there, his son, Isaac, asked him, where is the sacrifice that we will sacrifice? Where is the lamb that we will sacrifice? And Abram said unto the lad, though God, he said, God will provide. God will provide. Amen. So he did not allow this to interfere with his heart because his heart was to please God. His heart was to please God. See, this is one thing that we don't understand. Because had we, if we understand it as much as we should understand it, we could see that the hand of God is extended even today. Because the promises of God is obtained through faith. And as we and as we walk by faith, not by sight, we're not gonna we're not gonna look at the circumstances or the situations and thinking that this is all life has to offer. No, we're gonna keep our eyes focused on the promise. Because the promise of God is where the word becomes to be a living reality in our hearts. When we believe the word and receive it and act on it by confessing what God has said. Amen. By confessing what God has said. So when we look at this, when we look at this, we see here in verse number six is that and Abraham took the wood of and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and he went both of them together. See, they went together. Now, Isaac, he's so happy. He's so happy. He don't know what's about to happen. My God, this young man about to have an experience, though. Oh, hallelujah. He's about to have an experience that's going to literally impact his life for eternity. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Glory to God. Verse number seven. And Isaac spake unto his spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the offering, for the burnt offering. Amen. See, Abraham never not one time lost confidence in what God has promised. And we lost, we, many of us have lost confidence in God's promise so many times that we have come to the place that we don't even know if God's word is true in our heart anymore. We have, mis, we have misplaced our trust when it comes to the word of God. Amen. Our confidence in God is not where it should be anymore. Amen. So God is looking at us. And God has given us an opportunity today. He's given us an opportunity today. What he says in Malachi chapter 3, and verse 6, uh, and draw nigh to me, return to me, and I will return to you. Amen. So God has given us an opportunity today to return to him in faith. Amen. Return to him through faith. God wants us to come back to him. He wants us to believe again. He wants us to give us that second chance. He wants, to he wants us to have that third chance. He wants us to have that fourth chance. 
Amen. Are y'all ready for your first chance, your second chance, your third chance? Your, I'm ready for my fifth or sixth chance. Glory to God. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit until I know that the promise is fulfilled in my heart and in my life. Because the word of God is not going to return void until it have accomplished the things that pleases God. Amen. Until it would have accomplished the things that pleases God. And so when I look at this, I see all the promises that God was giving Abraham. So as we look at verse number Verse number eight, he said, "My son, Abraham, and, and, and Abraham, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide Himself a lamb for the burnt offering. For so they, for so they went, for, so they went, both of them together, and th and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built. Know what he did? He went on and built the altar. He built the altar." Glory to God. Abraham went on and built the altar. Oh my God. And he laid the wood in position. He laid the wood in order. And he and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar. And upon the wood. Now you think, what was what do you think what was going through this man's heart during that time? What do you think was going through Isaac's heart? Not only his heart, but what do you think was going through Abraham's heart when Abraham was offering up his son just to be obedient to God, to show God how much he loved him? Oh, friend, if Abraham can show God such love, such favor, amen, then should not we be able to, to, to show such a, a demonstration of God's love in our life? Amen. Should not we be able to show God such a, a demonstration of our love in, in our life? How we do it? By standing on the word of God. By standing in faith. Not allowing doubt and unbelief to cloud up our mind with fear, unbelief, amen, things that would not profit us nothing. God want us to simply stand on his word like Abraham. He's giving us a good example here, folks. A good example to stand on the word. Amen. Notice what he says in verse number verse number 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Oh, my God. It's bad enough to get to, to, to lay him on the altar, but to actually but to actually take the knife and to draw it back to slay his own son, to kill his own son, he showed that nothing would interfere with his love for God. Nothing would interfere with his love for God. And when God saw that, look at verse number 10. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Oh my God, I can't imagine what Abraham was experiencing during that time. Because he see his son, and he's been asked to take his son's life for a, a burnt offering. Oh, my God. I don't know, but that showed to me a, a strong character. That shows strong character to me. Amen. <clears throat> Verse number 12 said, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. <clears throat> For now I know that thou feareth God. See, now that I know thou feareth God. My God. Now see, that's powerful. Seeing that thou, seeing, seeing, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Oh, glory to God. My, thy only son, you did not withhold him from me. Oh, glory. My God, my God, my God. And, and now notice what he said. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and took... <clears throat> and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took him, took the ram, and offered him up for the burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place, the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh. 
Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. God wants to provide for you every promise that he has made. And it's going to come through the avenue of faith. Through the avenue of faith. Amen. God, faith is a supernatural force that when we learn to apply correctly will cause us to experience God's goodness and God's best in our lives. Amen. Whatever that you're facing, I want to take you now to, to the book of Mark. To the book of Mark. Amen. Chapter 11. To the book of Mark. Chapter 11. Hallelujah. In the book of Mark chapter 11, look at verse number 22. Verse number 22 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. God is calling us to faith, to live a life of faith. Amen. He said, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say. Notice what he said now. God is showing us how to ignite our faith that the promises that he has made will be uh, received in our lives. How do we receive these promises? He's going to show us right here in the, in the book of Mark, verse 22 through 24. Amen. Verse 22 through 24. It's, that's a, that's, a, that's a, a mystery in God's word that God wants to reveal to my heart. I tell you, when I was in Bible school uh, uh, at Raymond Bible Training Center, and Dr. Kenneth Hagin, he was one of the instructors there. The prophet Kenneth Hagin was one of the instructors when I was in Bible school. And, and, he, and, and, and his classes, he taught the faith classes. And his classes, he gave us the powerful illustrations. Amen. He gave us these powerful illustrations. And I'm going to just share something with you here. The biblical confession it's a part of the uh, it's a part of unlocking your faith un uh, loosening your faith to go to work on your behalf amen why don't we just take God's word for what it says amen I'm reading from I'm reading from one of uh, Kenneth Hagin books amen this is uh, Kenneth Hagin Jr. amen I'm reading from one of his books this this passage this, 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 this little segment here why don't we just take God at his word for what he said? Amen. For example, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24, Jesus gave us a, a, a pattern for biblical confession and prayer. This is, one of the, this is one way you possess all that God has for you as a believer. See, God wants us to, to possess all that he has for us as a believer. Amen. There's, there. See, he gave us scriptures and gave us everything. Why do, why, why do many people, why do many believers have problems possessing all the promises of God for their lives? It is, is it that they don't believe? Well, usually it's, usually it is that we don't believe. Amen. But not only do we not believe. We have to act on what we believe. See, because if you believe it, it's going to change what you're saying about it. You're going to begin to confess what you believe to be true. Amen. The Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So you're going to, you're, you're going to change what you're saying about what you believe. Amen. And once you change what you're saying about what you believe, then you're going to see the manifestation of what you believe come to pass. See, that's how God did in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. He said, let there be light. God did not go around trying to figure out how it's going to happen. He spoke the word. And what he's showing us right here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 23 says, For verily I say unto thee, unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now notice every time he talks about saying something, he's talking about confessing. I, I, I use that word say as, as I will use confess. Amen. I, so I will continue to confess 
but I'm believing that I that I'm continuing to confess what I believe in God's word to be true. So as I continually to believe what God has said in his word is true, now what am I doing? I'm taking a bold stand on what God has said. I'm taking a stand on God's word, literally. Amen. That's what Abraham did when, he, when God told him to take his son to the mount, amen, and to offer him for a burnt offering there. Abraham took God at his word, and he went and followed God's instruction. See, this is one of the main things. We have to take God at his word, and number two, we have to follow his instructions. We have to follow the instructions because the promises is not based on our theory or what we think. The promises are based on what we know and what we uh, what we know to be true in God's word. Amen. Faith is known. Faith is faith comes where the will of God is known. Amen. And so when I look at this in verse number twenty four, it says. Therefore I say unto you, what things will you desire when you pray? See, it's even helps you in your prayer life, confessing. See, if, if I'm walking around, if I got pain in my body, I'm not going to go around talking about, oh, I got this pain in my stomach, and look, I don't know what it is. It could be my appendix, it could be my liver, it could be my uh, kidney, it could be, I don't know what it is. Hey, Amen. It could be my, uh, my colon. Oh, my God. I don't know what's going on with me. I'm not going to walk around talking like that. Hey, Amen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cause whatever that is bothering me. I'm going, to, I'm going, to, I'm going to look up the Word of God. Since I'm talking about my health, I'm going to look up the Word of God concerning healing, and I'm going to start confessing over and over the Word of God concerning my health. Amen. Why? Because see, faith is based on not only what I believe, but what I confess. Amen. Because my confession. My words must line up with what I believe. Amen. So now that my heart is in the right place and with the word of God, my, my mind is, my heart and my mind is coming in alignment with the word of God. Now I have to start confessing what my mind and my heart is believing concerning the word of God. Now that I'm confessing it, now my expectation is out there. I'm expecting God to honor his word. I'm expecting God to honor his word. How does is, how is that happen? Because you see, God said in the book of Psalms 107, verse 20, that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So as I believe and as I confess and as I read it and as I act, amen, my, my, my confession is my acting. Amen. My confession is my acting. Now that I'm believing and confessing, and acting now, my healing is even though it seems like it's far away, it is nigh at hand. Amen. It is nigh at hand. Why? Because you see, my mouth and my heart is coming in alignment with the Word of God. My mouth and my heart is coming in alignment with the Word of God. So eventually, Jesus will, Jesus, Jesus' Word. Jesus is going to, he said, have faith in God. So eventually, as I keep everything in line with the word of God, you see, just like Abraham, he stayed right in line with what God told him to do. And when God carried him out there, and when God told him what to do, everything that God told him began to come to pass. After that, everything that God told him began to come to pass. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back to Genesis once again. Chapter 22, one more time, I, because I forgot to show you this a while ago. Maybe it was, I was holding just for this purpose right here. Look at verse number, verse number, uh, verse number 17, verse number, no, let's go back to verse number 16. Verse number 16 said, and, and said, by myself, see, God, God promised, God promised to Abraham. He said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing, see, knows what I'm talking about. Now, these are the promises that God showed Abraham because he honored him in every way. God showed Abraham that in blessing, 
Oh my God. I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand on the seashore. Now, what was Abraham's seed? Abraham's seed was his son, Isaac. When Abraham offered up his son, Isaac, Abraham gave God his best. Abraham gave God everything that he needed to walk in the promises, uh, to receive the promises that God has made to him. Amen. And so it says right here, it says right here that verse number 17, in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed. So, uh, thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand of the seashore, upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. My God. Thy seed shall possess the gates of thy enemy, of his enemies. Amen. Look at verse number 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, we've been engrafted into the family of Abraham that promises that God made to Abraham, they now come down into us. They now come down from their generation on down through generation after generation after generation into our lives. And God is showing us how to activate the promises that the blessing that God has given us in his word will eventually be in our lives. Not just something we are hoping for, but something that we can obtain, something we can have now. Now. Because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by we, the elders, the Bible said the elders obtained a good report. Amen. So now let's look at verse number, verse number, verse number 18. He says, Genesis chapter 22, verse number 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast, notice what he said, obey my voice. Obey my voice. When we obey the voice of the word of God, we set ourselves up for the promises of God to be activated in our life. Because to set ourselves up on the promise of God, that means we are standing in faith on the word of God. We are standing in faith on the word of God. Amen. And verse 19 says, And so Abraham returned uh, to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Bathsheba. And Abraham dwelt at Bathsheba. Amen. So he went back to where his he went back to his dwelling place. Him and the two guys that came with them, with him and his son Isaac, and they all went back together. They all went back together. How how did that happen? Abraham, he trusted God. Abraham believed God. Amen. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Book of Romans, chapter 4. Amen. And look at verse number. Hallelujah. Verse number 13. Let's look at verse number 13. And it says, Romans chapter 4, verse number 13. Amen. I'm still, I'm still talking about the faith of the supernatural force. I'm telling you, folks, if we get a hold of this, it will push us deeper into the presence of God than we've ever been before. I'm telling you what I know. Because, you see, I learned this a long time ago. I learned it a long time ago. And, and God has called me back. He's calling me back to this area of my spiritual lifestyle. Amen. And in other words, God's called me back to uh, faith, walking by faith, talking about faith, speaking on faith, living by faith. Amen. And showing you how to receive the promise of God by faith. Amen. And, 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 me, and, and what I'm doing that. It's going to freshen up my understanding. It's going to help me to receive the promises that God has promised me. Because you see, I'm believing God for a building right now. Amen. I'm believing God for a building right now. And I know that my faith plays a great part in me receiving that building. The building that we was in, the fire, the, the fire chief and the, the building co commission, they closed that building down. That's why, we, that's why I'm coming to you like I'm coming right now. 
they closed that building out. It was 58 building, 58 businesses in that building that we was renting. But all those businesses were shut down, were shut down. And so we, we are believing God for our own building so we, will, so we won't get shut down no more. Amen. We believe in God for a building that have enough space and have bathrooms and enough space and an office space and everything so that we can hold our services without interruption. You, you ever get tired of being interfered with? Amen. But I'm tired of I'm tired of being interfered with. And I want to I want to come to a place where I can see the glory of God manifesting in such a way that when the people walk in the door, they will experience the miracle working power of God just by stepping in the door. Hallelujah. And folks, and that's going to happen. Faith is going to take us into that place of victory over every work of the enemy. Are you ready? And are you ready to receive God's promise in your life? Well, we're going to receive them through faith. Amen. Look with me in the book of Romans chapter 4 and look at verse number 13. For the promises that he should be the heir of the world knows what he was. Now, Abraham not only was the heir, but he was an heir of the world. <clears throat> Can you see that? He was an heir of the world. Amen. Was not to him, not to Abraham, or to his seed through the law. Notice this promise that God had gave Abraham. They did not come through the law. Did not come through the law. And this is why faith is so important. Notice what it said. It did not come through the law, but, oh God, did not come through the uh, law, but through the righteousness of faith. In other words, through right standing with God. <laughs> through the righteousness of faith, which I'm, 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 I'm saying it like this, through right standing with God. So the promises that Abraham received for the world was not through the law, but through the avenue of faith. But through the avenue of faith. In other words, standing on what God has said and not wavering, not doubting, not giving up, not being double-minded, but walking by faith and not by sight. But walking by faith and not by sight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can y'all see that? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe that God is calling us, folks, to a life of faith. He's been, I mean, this is, this is not just what I believe. I know that he's doing it. I know that he's doing it. Notice what it says, verse number, verse number 14. For if they were, for they which are of the law, be heirs of faith, be heirs. Faith is made void. Amen. So we see that faith and the law are not going hand in hand. Because faith opens up the door to the supernatural, or opens up the door to the promises of God to be revealed and to be received. When the law opens up the door to the natural. Amen. To the natural. Amen. So now we see in verse number 14, it says, Romans chapter 4, verse 14. Romans 4, 14. For if they were, if, for they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is made of none effect, because the promises are not are not given through the law. The promise was not made through the law. The promise was made through faith, and the only way you're going to obtain these promises is through faith. Amen. Through faith. Look at verse number fifteen, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgressions. Amen. Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all, no visit, to all the seed. So the promises are made to us, the promises that are given to us are given to us by faith. Amen. And to all the seed. Not just part of the seed of Abraham, but to all the seed of Abraham. When we being the seed of Abraham, the promises that God has given are ours to obtain through the avenue of faith. Oh, hallelujah. Through the avenue of faith. Amen. Verse number seven, verse number 
verse number 16 again. There, therefore, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promises might be sure to all the seed, not of that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Amen. Who is the father of us all. Look at verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him, before whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. See, you might be believing God for the promises, but the only way those promises are going to be released and received in your life is that you learn how to stand on God's word in faith. And when you learn to stand on God's word in faith, it's going to change your whole outlook or the way you approach the word of God. Amen. When God promises begin to be revealed in your life, you're going to see that your health, your health is not a problem for God to touch. Your healing is not something that is hard to come by. Amen. Because when you know that God, that the Bible said that Jesus bore your sickness and he carried your diseases, and by his strife you are healed, then you're not going to walk around talking about how sick you are. You're going to walk around saying, Jesus, you bore my sickness and you carry my disease. And by your stripes, I am healed. Amen. Your whole vocabulary is going to change. You're not going to walk around talking about how sick you are. You're going to walk around, at, uh, you're going to walk around confessing God's healing verses over your life. Amen. He bore your sickness. He carried your diseases. So why would you want to talk about the, the pain that you experienced? Why do you want to talk about what the doctor said? Talk about what God said. God's word has the final authority and God's word has the power within itself to bring about his own fulfillment. When our faith is connected to the word, it gives a supernatural force to go to work on our behalf to bring God's word to become a living reality in our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So folks, let me encourage you. Hold on to the word of God because the word of God has the ability to set you free from the powers of darkness. Amen. I believe today that God's word is going to cause you to experience new health. Amen. I'm releasing my faith right now for new health to begin to rise up within you, within your heart. Amen. Because faith is the key that's going to unlock that supernatural force of God's word that the promise will be made sure in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when I look at the, when I see what God is saying to me through the word, look at verse number. Now I'm looking at, I'm in the book of Romans, chapter 4, and verse number, verse now verse number 18. Go ahead, turn your Bible there with me. Now verse number 18. Now notice what he said, because a lot of people, they give up. A lot of people give up because they don't see the answer right then. Oh no, you don't give up. Because you don't see the answer. That's the devil trying to make you. He's trying to get you to give up. Because he doesn't want you to hold to the answer. Because you don't got to hold on to the answer. The answer is the word of God. And the word of God is revealed in our hearts through faith. You got to hold on to the answer by faith. Amen. So notice what he says right here in verse number 18. Romans chapter 4 verse number 18. He says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. <clears throat> when God told Abraham to take his seed, to take his son Isaac, and to offer him for a sacrifice, Abraham still had to hold on to the promise that God gave him. Regardless of what God is telling him now, he knew that God was not a man, he shall lie. He knew that God would not go back on his word. Amen. He... Because he trusted God. He believed God. And God put his trust and his belief and his love for him to the test. And as God put Abraham's love for him, his trust for him, to the, and his faith in him to the test, God found Abraham to be faithful. He found Abraham to be faithful to the promises that he had given him. Oh, hallelujah. And God said, Abraham, because Abraham then took the knife, 
them draw back to take his son Isaac's life. And, and God spoke, the angel God spoke from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, hurt not the lad. Don't put no, do not harm the lad. <laughs> Abraham, and, and Abraham, I mean, I could see tears just coming out of Abraham's eyes. God, you know I love you, but I'm going to obey you even if it calls me to slay my own son. That's how much I love you. And God said, Abraham, now I know that you love me because you will not withhold your son, your only son from me. Now God made the promises to Abraham. He caused all the promises that he made to Abraham to become a living reality in Abraham's life. Abraham, because he trusted God, because he stood on the promises of God, his faith gave him to be, brought him to be one of the most wealthiest men in his region and the most looked upon man in the region, the most respected man in his region. Amen? Because of his faith in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's what God is showing us right here in his word. In Romans chapter 4 and verse number 19 it says, and being not weak in faith. See, Abraham was strong in his faith. And he said, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Oh, you see, the promise of God, because they didn't give up, they held on to what God was saying. Verse number, verse number 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. And this is where the enemy comes against you. He causes us to doubt the word of God. And it causes us to come into the realm of unbelief. And when, we, when that happens, folks, that stops the promises from manifesting in our life. You may be b believing God for a financial breakthrough. You may be believing God for a miracle for one of your children. Amen. You may believe in God for your business, amen, for your job, amen, for a race or whatever, whatever the case may be. you got to understand that the promises that God has given you, they are still available in the Word. But we must act upon God's Word in faith, amen. We must act upon God's Word in faith. Now, understand what I'm telling you right now, amen. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So God wants us to act on the word in faith. Faith acted upon releases the promises of God into our lives. I'm going to say that again. Faith acted upon releases the promises of God in our lives. God wants to bless you. God wants to raise you. God wants to exalt you. God wants to bring you to a place in Him that you've never walked before. And you're only going to arrive to that position is through faith. Your only way you're going to come to that position is through faith. Faith is the doorway into the supernatural force, into the realm of the supernatural force of faith. Because faith is acted upon through standing on the Word. Faith causes the promises that God made to Abraham to become a living reality in his life. God told Abraham he was going to bless him with a seed, and God gave Abraham that seed. Then in Genesis chapter 22, God required that seed back from Abraham. God asked Abraham to go to the mountain I'm going to show you and offer up your son there for a, a sacrifice, a burnt offering. And Abraham did not question God. He didn't even consult his wife about it. He didn't, he didn't say, Sarah, God is asking me to bring my son and offer him for a second. Abraham just took his boy. He took his two men with him. He took his donkey. He took the wood. He took the fire. And he took the blade to offer his son. And he went. Him and, him and, those, and, those, him and, and his son and the two servants. They went to the place that God had told him. And three days off in his journey, he saw the place afar off. And God showed him that this is the place that you are to offer up your son. And he told the two men to stay here 
while me and the lad go yonder and, and, and offer up sacrifice, and we will come again to you. Amen. And Abraham went, him and Isaac. And as they was going, Abraham, Isaac was full of excitement and said, My father, my father. And Abraham said, Here I am, son. And, and, and Isaac said, Well, where is the burnt offering that we are to offer on the sacrifice? And Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide. God will provide. So that place has been known even until this day. The name of that place is called Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. What that word means? God is our provider. God is our source. He will provide. Amen. So God will provide everything that you need. Amen. But you got to understand everything that God has promised is already in his word. And so you receive it by faith. You receive it by faith. Amen. And I know my time is brought up now. I got I'm a, one, two more scriptures. Amen. I'm going to, let, me, let me finish this right here. I got one more scripture I want to share with you. It says, <clears throat> Romans chapter 4 and verse number 20. It says, And he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Folks, we got to watch that unbelief. We got to destroy that unbelief with faith. Amen. Believe in our heart and not doubt in our heart. But, amen. So verse 20 says, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Strong in faith. And, and when you're strong in faith, you're not going to come sit there and complain, but you're going to give glory to God. You're going to give glory to God because you're strong in faith. You're going to give glory to God. And he said, and, and notice that verse number 21. He said, and being fully persuaded, being fully persuaded that what he, talking about God, had promised, he was also able to perform. In other words, Every promise that God made through faith, He's able to bring them to pass in your life. Amen. He's able to bring them to pass in my life, in our lives. None of us are exempt from the promises of God when we learn the process of receiving God's promises. Amen. And so He tells us the last scriptures. I'll go back to the book of Mark, chapter, Mark, chapter eleven. Mark chapter 11. Notice what he said. I'm going to read this passage to you one more time. And then we're going to close. Because see, you got to understand that God wants you to have faith. Amen. And he said, verse number 22, And Jesus answered and said unto them, talking about us, disciples. That's who we are. We are disciples. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto thee, unto you, that Whatsoever, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, your confession must come in line with the word of God that's coming out of your mouth and out of your heart. Whatever you believe in God for, your confession must come in alignment with what you believe in God for. Amen. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things will you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when you're praying, you're going, to you're going to be confessing what God has said. Your prayer and your confession is going to give way to the promises of God, which will cause them to be released and to come to pass into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all get anything out of this today? Well, I certainly hope so. Because I tell you, since I've been studying on faith again and, and ministering, you know, it just really is reassuring me of God's promises in my life. And I know that that building that I believe in God for, and I know that it's, it's about to manifest. Amen. Because no matter what kind of territorial spirit that is trying to interfere, no matter what demon that is trying to interfere, amen, the promise of God that God has gave me, as long as I stand in faith, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue, every word that has been spoken over me, every word that has been spoken against me, every word that have came toward me that was not sent by God to try to stop, block, or hinder the work of God in my life, the thing that God had called me to accomplish here in this city, God will fulfill. God will fulfill. Now I know that there's a lot, there's a lot of voices in the land. And there's a lot of voices that have spoken against this ministry. 
But you know what? God has the final say so concerning this ministry. Man did not call me, and man cannot stop me. But God has given me an assignment, and that assignment will not be will not be aborted because of what man has said. The only way the assignment be aborted if God say so. If God say so, friend, your faith can cause the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life. Many have started out at the time that we started out, and they closed their doors because they had pressure from the opposite forces. Pressure came upon them, and they could not withstand the pressure, and they gave up. They closed up their doors. Folks, I will never close these doors up because of pressure. The only way these doors will be closed up, if God say, do something different. Amen. The doors of the church will remain open. New Life in Christ Jesus Church will remain open. Amen. The building that God has promised us, it shall come. It shall come. It shall come with enough space and with bathrooms in it. It will come with office space in it. It will come with everything. It will come uh, 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 ready to be occupied. Not something we're going to have to go in and fix up. It's going to come ready to be occupied. Amen. And all we got to do is put up our cameras and everything we need to put up. And we're going to go to work for the kingdom of God. That building, it shall manifest. And I'm calling it in now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And every person that the devil has ran away from this ministry, God is going to restore back to this ministry. Amen. Those that will not be restored, God will replace them. God will replace them. I love them, but if God wants to replace them, that's God's business. Amen. I love you all, and I thank God for you. It is time for us to take about morning offering now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. God wants to bless you above and beyond what you can think or imagine. Amen. He wants to take you to the place beyond where you can imagine with your natural concept of thinking. God wants to put you in a place where the miracle working power of God is ready to go to work on your behalf. I love you all and God love you. Let's prepare our heart to receive the offering today. If you're going to be given with your ATM card, with your credit card, you may go to my website, LarryBurgerMinistries.com, and there you may use your ATM card or your credit card and plant your seed of faith. Amen. Plant your seed of faith. When you give, release your faith for your breakthrough. Release your faith for your miracle. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm going to come in agreement with you for your breakthrough and for your miracle. Amen. And if you're giving by the mail system, you're going to write, if you're going to send it in through a through the form of a check, a money order, make your check or money order payable to Larry Burger Ministries at P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Again, that Larry Burger Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Or you can make your check payable to New Life in Christ Jesus, that same P.O. Box, 417913 Sacramento, California 95841 God bless you. We thank God for you. Amen. As you prepare your giving. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all giving is ready? Let's pray. You get your giving ready also. That with us by the internet. Now, Father, I pray over this tithe and over this offering, Father, that is coming into the house of God, Father. I release my faith, Father, in the name of Jesus. For everyone that will give in this offering today, I'm asking you, Father, for a supernatural financial breakthrough on money that's been held back, that it be released right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that the devil has stolen, Father, shall return a hundred and a thousand times more. A thousand times over in Jesus' name. Father, I declare and I decree that as we have given, it shall be given unto us. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into our bosom. And Father, you said in your word that you will cause our ground to give forth the fruit in its season, that everything that we touch is blessed. So, Father, I declare that we are blessed to be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you for your giving. Amen. Those of you that uh, never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right now you have an opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart. Just say this prayer with me. Just you, know, you don't have to get up and do something special. Just repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sin, and I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. I receive forgiveness of my sin right now. Amen. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, if you said it and you meant it, folks, God has already acted upon your heart. He's already forgiven you. He's already restored you. He's already given you new life in Christ Jesus. You are now a born again child of God. Amen. You are now a born again child of God. You know, every day when we pray, we should always, Father, I'm asking you to forgive me. If I did something that I don't know of or did something that I didn't, Father, I ask you to forgive me. Let my heart be pure before you. We need to repent daily, folks. To, uh, so that our heart will remain pure before God. Amen. That don't mean you're not going to make no mistakes, but it means that you're acknowledging your mistakes. And when you acknowledge your mistakes, God is going to acknowledge you. Amen. How is he going to acknowledge you? He's going to forgive you of whatever sin you have committed. He's going to forgive you. But you have to acknowledge that you need his forgiveness. Amen. Glory to God. Now, don't forget... You that are with us from Alabama, we're going to be coming to Alabama in September. And we're going to have a special prayer and healing services, two nights of services for you there in Decatur, Alabama. So we're going to come back with, to you with the hotel information where the meeting will be held at very soon. So keep, whenever we come online, you need to contact us. You need to be listening to us because we're going to give you that information where the meeting is going to be held very soon. Amen. As soon as we get it all cleared up through the hotel, we're going to let all of you there in Alabama know that we are on our way. And we're going to be coming with the word of faith and with the anointing and the power of God to release in your lives. God bless you until then. If you're here today and you have a special prayer request, I will pray for you right now. Amen. Let me just pray with you. No, stand right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I release my faith, Father. For the healing of my sister from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, I declare, Father, from this day forth, divine health and healing belong to her. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. So now I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Anybody want prayer here first? The only one came up. Nobody? Okay. So let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all of them under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that their faith will be activated once again to believe you, Father, and not look at and not to look at you and try to believe for something small, but look to you and believe for something big. Because what you want for us is a whole lot bigger than what we're believing for. Father, you're not a small God, you're a big God. So God, we're gonna believe big. We're gonna believe for the big building. We're gonna believe, Father, for all the property we need for the parking lot. We're going to believe, Father, for everything that we need in the building to be already there in Jesus' name. And as I pray for my, for the people, Lord God, I pray that you will touch, that you will minister to their hearts, God, that you will cause their hearts to be united with the spirit of faith, Father, that their faith will grow, that they will begin to experience the goodness of the Lord. And as they do, Father, your name will be glorified. I bless them now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Pastor Larry, pastor of New Life in Christ Jesus Church, Sacramento, California. We thank God for, for all of you. And uh, Richard, God bless you. Good to see you there also. Amen. Rose, Rosanna, good to see you also. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good day. Until the next time, God bless. Bye-bye.